Thank you for tuning in. In this video, I'm going to take the next step with the NXP Hover Games drone and demonstrate a basic arming takeoff and land through the web browser. In a previous video, I covered configuring Raspberry Pi with Mavros and interfacing with the NXP FMU. We're using Mavros to communicate as well as receive telemetry back. In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the ROS libraries available to us that make it very simple to uh, send commands and receive data from the FMU. Now, ultimately, I want to get to a point where a lot of these blocks that we've created with drone blocks that interface with DJI hardware, I would love for that to uh, be possible with the NXP drone. So hopefully, uh, this is a step in the right direction. Currently, SSH into Raspberry Pi on the NXP drone and let me just show some of the processes that are running so that we gain an understanding of what's going on. On boot I have uh, the Ross Bridge server running. That is a package that uh, was able to install on Ubuntu and what this package does is it allows us to communicate with Ross uh, using web sockets. So we can see that Ross Bridge server. And previously I covered launching Mavros uh, using the PX4 profiles. These both get started up on boot. I'll just go to the scripts directory and I have a script for each that launch the respective service. That's the Mavros one and then our Ross Bridge. And the other important package is uh, Ross Lib JavaScript library that doesn't actually run on Raspberry Pi, that will run in our web browser. I'll put a link to this gist. It's basically an HTML page with the ROS libraries included as well as some of the basic JavaScript functionality. We'll take a look at that. If I go to my Raspberry Pi running a web server, we have the ROS lib page here that will show us our flight mode. It will allow us to arm take off and land. I'm running a, a lightweight web server, it's Nginx, and if we go to the CD var www, we can see the ROS HTML page, which is what I just demonstrated in GitHub. That is actually running on Raspberry Pi and will be accessible uh, to my computer or any other device on the network. Now, one dependency is that currently Raspberry Pi is connected to my local network. So for this to work, you obviously have to be within range of the Wi-Fi access point. And let me cover one last thing before we go outdoors and do this test. I think this is important. It took me a while just to read through the documentation and understand how it works. I'm going to talk through how this uh, takeoff actually works. When the user clicks the takeoff button, this function is called. And what's interesting about takeoff is it does require uh, knowing the GPS coordinates of the aircraft. So we create a listener and we listen for messages on this topic, this global position global. We subscribe to it immediately when that response comes back because it's publishing at a pretty high frequency. We're going to unsubscribe and assuming that we have a latitude and longitude, and therefore we construct a, a takeoff object. It's based on the Roslib service. And as part of that, we create a request, a service request with the required parameters. These are the parameters that are necessary for the takeoff to work. So we have a pitch and a yaw. I set those to zero. Latitude, longitude, those are the lat and long that we just acquired from this ROS topic. And finally, we call the takeoff service, which requires this request to be populated. And assuming all goes well, uh, the aircraft will take off. Stabilized flight mode, POFCTL flight mode. Arming denied, throttle not censored.
using minimum takeoff altitude, 2.50 meters. Auto dot takeoff flight mode. Auto.land flight mode. POSCTL flight mode. I hope that demonstration wasn't too clunky. I had to work the camera, my remote control, and the computer just to be able to issue the commands. But let me make sure that I reiterate. I wanted to take off in position control mode because I wanted to not have to deal with a manual or stabilize where the wind might be blowing uh, the drone around. And I wanted to also be able to sort of land where I took off from. I did call out the issue with making sure that you have your throttle up. You have to have it down to take off, but once you take off, uh, bring it up. If you need to take manual control and your throttle is all the way down, obviously that's going to result in just a loss of control. It'll basically drop out of the sky. You might be able to regain control. I'm going to look into a better way to address that. Perhaps there's a way to override that so that you can take off and not have to have your throttle down. Still learning as I go. I wanted to demonstrate. I'm really encouraged by Ross and the Ross Lib. Uh, JavaScript library. We have a lot of capabilities here. I'll certainly share uh, more information in an upcoming video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.